Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. When I choose various monitors to review on the channel, I always like to target various different types of products, whether it's the budget champions, the high-end beasts, or the stuff that packs new technologies. The monitor I'm reviewing today falls into the latter of those categories. It packs a panel type that I haven't tested before. So what I'm looking at is the MSI Optics MAG251RX. This is not a great product name. I find MSI's lineup pretty confusing with all the MAG, MPG, and MEG stuff going on there, plus some alphabet soup thrown into the mix. But anyway, it's called the MAG251RX, and you wouldn't know it from the name, but this is a 24.5 inch 1080p IPS monitor with a huge 240Hz refresh rate, making this the first super high refresh IPS display I've tested. Since 240Hz monitors hit the market a few years back, most models have had to stick to TN panels as other LCD technology simply hasn't been fast enough to properly hit such a high refresh rate. But in the last six months or so, new generations of IPS and VA technology have become available, unlocking 240Hz for the first time. And yes, 240Hz VA monitors are a thing as well, although I'm hoping to cover that in a future review. So as I said, the MAG251RX packs a 240Hz IPS panel it is a 1080p panel, although apparently 1440p 240Hz IPS panels aren't too far away either, but given its smaller 24-inch size, this sort of resolution is fine. Other features apparently include one millisecond greater gray response times, we'll see about that, plus adaptive sync and display HDR400 support. What will be really interesting to see is whether 240Hz is actually possible on an IPS monitor. Has this technology improved its performance to an acceptable level, or is it still a fair way off 240Hz TNs? Because if it can deliver on performance, the MAG251RX's price tag of just $360 US is pretty attractive when you look over the 240Hz monitor market right now. Before that, let's look at the design. It's a fairly basic affair here with most of the outer materials being plastic of several finishes. The squarish base has a standard matte finish. The pillar has this brushed metal finish, although it is still plastic, and then the rear combines the two. This isn't the cheapest looking design I've seen, but I'd say it falls more towards the cheap end than the premium end with some of the better monitors, including metal stands and stuff like that. I think this monitor looks okay, but it's nothing special really. MSI do like a bit of flair to their design, so you get an RGB LED strip on the back, which most people won't see. There's also MSI's red logo and unusually a gaming eSports logo. I'm not really sure why this eSports logo is necessary here. Not everyone buys a 240Hz monitor for eSports. I don't think this is a great inclusion and I'd rather it wasn't there, but like the RGB strip, it's on the back so most people won't see it. While there are slim bezels on the front, this is a chunky monitor for something 24 inches in size. I'm not sure whether this is related to the new 240Hz IPS panel or not, but it is a thick boy. That said, the stand is very strong and has a decent range of height adjustability plus tilt support. Unfortunately, there's no pivoting, so you can't use this monitor in a portrait orientation, although it is VESA compatible if you want to swap out the stand. Ports are good here with a single display port 1.2 and two HDMI 2.0 ports plus USB-C which uses display port alt mode as its connection. On top of that there's a USB hub and an audio output jack. USB-C is an interesting choice, normally we see this more on professional monitors, but as it becomes more widespread it's good to have it on a monitor too. The on-screen display gets my tick of approval, it's controlled through a directional toggle and packs a good range of features including the usual cheat stuff like black boosting night vision mode and crosshairs. There's also backlight strobing support through what MSI calls anti-motion blur, which I'll test out a bit later. Response times are the big story here, so let's dive right in. MSI keeps things simple here with just three overdrive modes. The first one being normal, which shows a 6 millisecond greater gray average at 240Hz with no overshoot. This isn't quick enough for 240Hz gaming, but considering this looks like overdrive disabled to me, it's a pretty promising start. The fast mode brings things up a notch to a 5.30 millisecond greater gray average, again with no appreciable overshoot. However, a 240Hz refresh rate means the image is changing on screen every 4.17 milliseconds, so a 5 millisecond greater gray average exceeds this refresh window. This causes smearing, and refresh rate compliance of just 50% shows that this overdrive mode also isn't quite fast enough to keep up with 240Hz. The good news is the faster mode is decent, pushing this IPS panel to its limits with a 3.21 millisecond greater gray average. There is some overshoot introduced, particularly for close together transitions, some as high as 30%, but the testing shows this only impacts around 7% of transitions, so that's not too bad. In gaming, I occasionally spotted some light trails behind moving objects from this overshoot, 
but I also found the faster mode was clearer than the fast mode. So it's a minor trade-off and it's not too noticeable, so I don't think it will concern many gamers. And with this faster mode, you can see we now have excellent 240Hz compliance of 100%, which is a surprise to me, given I didn't think this sort of IPS panel would be quick enough. But it is. A 3.21 millisecond average is TN-like performance and comfortably good enough for a true 240Hz experience. This new generation of AHVA panels from AU Optronics definitely is up to the task of these higher refresh requirements. There are some downsides, however. The faster overdrive mode isn't suitable for adaptive sync gaming, as performance quickly drops away at 144Hz with a significant increase to overshoot. Light trails behind moving objects are now quite obvious. I don't think this mode is usable at this refresh rate. However, in an unusual turn of events, faster is the best mode to use at 60Hz, delivering a 3.15 millisecond average with similar overshoot to 240Hz. So if you have a fixed refresh 60Hz input like a game console, I'd set this to faster and enjoy enjoy very good response times. The best overdrive mode for adaptive sync gamers is the fast mode, which provides good performance right throughout the refresh rate range. Yeah, it's not as fast at up at 240Hz, but you don't get much overshoot at 144 or 100Hz, so if your frame rate is fluctuating around that mark, or you're playing a variety of games with some titles sitting in that performance range, you won't have to worry about inverse ghosting. On the other hand, if you are playing esports titles up to you know 240Hz, or you know your performance won't dip down too much with adaptive sync enabled, using faster is the better option. It's a minor annoyance that there isn't one overdrive mode that's suitable for all refresh rates. That's where this monitor would benefit from variable overdrive, but I think the performance in the fast mode is still quite good for your adaptive sync gaming. The other question to answer is whether MSI's claims of a one millisecond greater grade response time are accurate. Even using the faster overdrive mode, I think it's pretty clear that we aren't getting a one millisecond average. There are some transitions that I recorded in the 1.4 to 1.5 millisecond range, so it gets close if we're talking best performance, and lots of manufacturers mean best case performance, but personally I wouldn't say this is a one millisecond monitor. That said, most TNs that claim one millisecond response times are more like three millisecond in practice too, so I'd say it is accurate to call this a one millisecond class monitor going on, I guess, the general industry standard right now. Speaking of TNs, let's see how the MAG251RX stacks up against some other high refresh monitors I've tested. Impressively, its best case performance sits among other 240Hz TNs that I've reviewed, including the Gigabyte KD25F and the HP Omen X27, which are both very quick. In fact, in fact, the MAG251RX is even quicker than the Pixio PX5, a 240Hz TN monitor, and I think that's also evident when viewing pursuit camera shots. The MAG251RX is a bit clearer than the PX5 in motion, as you'd expect from a 25% faster response time, so that's very impressive for an IPS monitor. Dark level performance is no issue with the MAG251X, as you could see from the detailed response time charts where it can be an issue for some 1080p VA monitors. And response time compliance is very strong with a more even experience across the refresh range, which sees it outperform other 240Hz monitors, even some TNs. That said, anything above 80% is strong, and the best 240Hz TNs are above 90% here. While the MAG251RX's IPS panel and overdrive is impressive at 240Hz, the panel's overall performance still can't match the best TNs out there. Average error rates for the MAG251RX are more mid-table, whereas the super quick KD25F sees almost no overshoot. Similar story now inverse ghosting charts. The TN-based KD25F has no inverse ghosting, while the MAG251X has a small amount, at roughly equivalent average response times. So TN overall still does have an edge at this sort of refresh rate, if you get a good quality monitor. The MAG251RX is also an excellent performer at a fixed 60Hz refresh rate. This sort of performance is elite and makes this display great for console gaming as well as PC gaming. I know this is a use case for a lot of people, so you can definitely get the best of both worlds here. Input lag is excellent, with very little processing delay, a very fast refresh rate, and quick response times all contributing to full input lag of less than 6 milliseconds from input to completed transition. That's elite level performance that only a few monitors I've tested can achieve. Power consumption at 200 nits is in the same realm as other 240Hz 24-inch displays I've reviewed, so whether you go IPS or TN here makes little difference to efficiency and heat output. The more basic Pixio PX5 holds the crown here, but it is only a few watts more efficient, so it's a minor difference.
The backlight strobing mode MSI provides is good, but it's not perfect. It provides added clarity at 240Hz, but cannot be used at the same time as adaptive sync, so it's only usable with a fixed refresh. And it does work with a range of refresh rates, but I would recommend 240Hz here. There's a light to moderate amount of strobe crosstalk seen in repeated images of the UFO using Blurbuster's UFO test that can be noticeable during gaming, but it is clearer than the standard 240Hz mode. How useful this mode will be comes down to how noticeable you find the crosstalk in the games you're playing. Moving now into color performance, and first up, while this is an IPS panel, it's more refresh rate oriented than color oriented, so there's no wide gamut support here. However, we do get full sRGB coverage, which is fine for gaming. Out of the box calibration is much better than average. My unit had barely any tint from the factory, with a good CCT curve on the left, and decent adherence to the sRGB gamma curve you can see in the middle. Overall grayscale delta E average performance was 1.23, a very strong result, and below our 2.0 threshold we like to see for accurate colors. Saturation performance is good, again we get a delta E average under 2.0 with little to no oversaturation as this is just an sRGB display. But there are some minor issues at high saturation levels as you can see in the chart with reds, greens and yellows exceeding a delta E of 3.0. This really only impacts top end performance, most other colors are good. Similar results in our color checker test with a 2.05 delta E average with most higher than 2.0 issues coming from colors near to or along the top edge of the CIE 1976 chart. Between green and red. The MAG251RX exceeds the sRGB spectrum in this area, so we get some minor issues, but really this is nitpicking. This monitor has great factory calibration. I attempted a few OSD tweaks here to take performance up a notch, but nothing made a significant difference because of the strong factory performance. So the only real way to tighten up this monitor further is with a full calibration. As usual, we get excellent results, and some of the color and saturation minor annoyances that we've seen before are resolved with perfect Delta E performance across the board. As always, the ISIS profile we created for this monitor is available to our Patreon members, although due to panel variants not everyone will achieve accurate results with it. Panel brightness is excellent at over 400 nits when calibrated, easily enough for usage in a wide variety of viewing environments. Viewing angles are also excellent with only a small change to gamma at off angles. This is far better than similar TN monitors which have significant color shifts if you don't view it dead on. This is one of the main reasons I would recommend an IPS monitor over TN in this performance class. Contrast ratio is also very good for an IPS monitor at around 1200 to 1 after calibration, which actually increased the contrast ratio slightly. This is much better than LG's Nano IPS panels, which also offer great response times, and it's higher than all TN monitors I've tested. Most 240Hz models I reviewed are around the 850 to 1 mark, so the MAG251RX delivers 40% higher contrast here. That's fantastic. Of course, VAs are obviously another step above. Uniformity is also excellent, an area most monitors have improved over over the last few years. My unit had a small amount of IPS glow in the bottom right corner, but nothing severe enough to impact gaming or any other content creation. It was a minor issue and in line with other IPS monitors I've tested recently. What about HDR performance? MSI has surprisingly gotten this unit display HDR 400 certified, but as we know, this is pretty much meaningless at telling buyers how good it is for HDR. The MAG251RX fails all three pillars of HDR as it doesn't offer sufficient peak brightness, it lacks local dimming, which limits its single frame contrast to 1200 to 1, which is far too low for HDR content, and it also doesn't have a wider than sRGB color gamut. The best I can say here is sustained brightness is decent, and it supports 10-bit processing, but outside of that, it's definitely an SDR screen. Despite not offering true HDR, the MSI MAG251RX is a surprisingly solid monitor. I really wasn't expecting the first generation of 240Hz capable IPS panels to offer a true 240Hz experience, but they do. In fact, performance when using the optimal overdrive mode gets very close to 240Hz TNs, essentially matching those displays in terms of motion clarity. From a response time perspective at 240Hz, there's nothing to be concerned about here. I do still think TNs hold a performance edge here as they have better overshoot handling and hold their performance better across a wider range of refresh rates. For the best performance with the MAG251RX, you'll need to change the overdrive setting depending on whether you're gaming at 200 plus FPS or more on the 100 to 150 FPS range, which is a bit annoying and not required with those best TNs, 
but this is a small trade-off I'd gladly make for the significantly better contrast ratio and viewing angles you get with this IPS panel compared to ultra-fast TNs. The difference in those areas is night and day. I was also impressed with MSI's factory calibration, which requires next to no tweaking for a great accurate experience. You rarely get this sort of performance with a gaming monitor, so that's a neat bonus. Many other areas perform well too, like brightness, input lag, and uniformity. There's even a backlight strobing mode here, which isn't perfect, but it is functional. There honestly aren't too many negatives here outside of a few minor things, certainly no glowing issues. The biggest I guess is MSI misleading people a bit with display HDR certification, but at the same time HDR isn't really advertised as a major feature on their website. The design is also fairly average, but it's quite functional so it's hard to complain too much. I think MSI has priced this monitor really well. At $360, it does command a bit of a price premium over the absolute cheapest 240Hz displays, but many of those use first generation super high refresh TN panels that are only okay in my opinion. When you put the MAG251RX up against some newer 0.5 millisecond class TNs like the Aorus KD25F, the MSI model is actually cheaper for what is in my opinion a better all round display. And we saw that in terms of response times and error rates, the $400 KD25F is only marginally faster. So yeah, I'd have no trouble recommending the MSI MAG251RX to someone wanting a 1080p 240Hz display. In fact, I'd recommend this over most TN equivalents because it performs similarly without many of TN's downsides. Until I find a TN model that's much faster, I think these IPS variants will be the way to go, which is a bit of a surprise to me, but yeah, a welcome one. And as always, it's great to see innovation and display tech evolving and getting better over time, which has led to this display being possible. That's it for this one. As always, you can subscribe for more of our monitor reviews and testing. We also do a few monitor roundups and buying guides from time to time. I think there's one coming up shortly, so it could be worth checking that one out when it goes live. As always, we also really appreciate the support we get from our patrons for our display testing. It really goes a long way to making all of this stuff possible. So yeah, if you want to support us directly, that's one of the best ways to do it. You can also check out our merch store as well if you're interested in stuff like our t-shirts and mugs and hoodies. That also goes a long way to supporting the channel. Links to both of those things are in the description below, and I'll catch you in the next one.